Music, it's a curious thing, isn't it? It's these little pockets of compressed air that travel from my cello, from this instrument, to your ears and into your brain, making all sorts of curious effects, thoughts and emotions. But what is music for, really? What's its purpose? Was it just an accident of evolution that has hung around long enough for us to enjoy in our spare time? Or does it perhaps have a deeper, more meaningful purpose? Well, I'd like to tell you about the experiences that I've had in the last few years of my life. Through these experiences, I came across answers to these questions and also came confronted with what I believe is the true power of music. Now, I know many of you might be thinking, with all the serious and important issues we're discussing here today, does music really have a place? And what I'd like to say to you is, that is a perfectly reasonable thing to think. In fact, for much of my life, I thought the very same thing. Though I'm a musician now, for much of my life, I turned away from music, feeling it had no real purpose. I started playing music as a young child, but then I moved away from it to study politics and economics. I felt if I was going to be in any way part of a positive change in this world, I was going to have to put down my cello and look elsewhere. But this all changed for me a few years ago. But I thought before I get into that, we could do together a little experiment. So the piece of music that I opened with you today um, is a piece of music that is possibly the most recognizable bit of music for the cello. It's uh, from Johann Sebastian Bach's Suites for Solo Cello. I played through the opening to the prelude from suite number one in G major. And this is a piece of music that's become synonymous with this instrument, the cello, an instrument that was developed in the 1700s in northern Italy. And many say it has a special quality, an edge above other instruments. People say that because it resembles the human voice in terms of its tone, its resonance, in terms of its frequency, that it has this unique ability to be able to reach in and affect us as humans. And I hope you agree there's no better example of this than the back cello suites. So for this experiment, what we're going to do is I'm going to play this same piece of music for you again, but this time I want to ask you to do something for me. I want you simply to notice the effect that you have in your body and your mind when you hear the music. Now, you may feel nothing at all, and that's absolutely fine. I just want you to take note as you hear the music. Okay, we probably had a range of reactions to that music in this room, but I imagine you felt somewhat pleasant. Perhaps you felt nothing at all, that's fine. Uh, but nothing I imagine that was too, too heavy, too deep, too, too profound while I played that music. Well, to continue with the experiment, I'm going to play for you this piece of music again. But this time, I want you to think of something specific. I want you to, in your mind, imagine a time that you spent in your life with someone that meant a lot to you, someone who is very special to you. It could be a, a parent, a child, someone from your childhood, a lifelong friend, a first love, but someone that you, when you were with them, you felt a deep connection to them. So think of a, a specific time when you were with that person where you felt safe and secure in their presence. You felt bonded to them. Okay, do we all have something in mind? Great, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this piece of music for you again, and I want you once again to notice the effects in your body and your mind while you're there in your mind with that person, that special someone, having quality time together. You can close your eyes if, if that helps. Okay. <laughs> Did we notice any difference in the effect that time? Any difference in the way that the music made us feel? The music has now become something deeper, more profound. It's reached into our past. It's reached into our emotions. 
it's helped to heighten that sense of connection we've had with that person. And perhaps it's even heightened the sense of connection that you felt with the other people in this room. It's music's ability to heighten this sense of connection that I feel is its most important quality. It's the true power of music. And it's something that I feel became all the more important a few years ago at the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, a time when it felt our sense of connection to others was changed completely. I know that we all felt it. Um, I certainly did myself. When the country started to lock down, I lost my job, like many other people. My wife was pregnant at the time, and I was anticipating the birth of my first child. And there was so much uncertainty in the air. Was I going to be able to be present for the birth of my child? Was I going to be able to provide for my family? How was it all going to turn out? So I turned, as a form of therapy, to my cello, to playing music every day. It helped give me a grounded sense of security in this uncertain time. It helped alleviate the anxieties that could have filled my every day. But then I did something a little different that I'd never done before, something that ended up changing my life forever. I began to film my playing and share it online. And at first I thought like I always had that with all this big dark cloud of uncertainty looming over everyone's minds, surely there was no space in there for music. Now, I was completely wrong. From the very first video I shared, hundreds of thousands of people around the world listened to, responded, and responded to the music. It was like nothing I could have ever expected. So I continued every day to share my music, playing outside my home in the west of Ireland with the beautiful backdrop of the Atlantic Ocean behind me. And soon it started to be viewed by tens of millions of people all around the world. And that is when the messages started to flood in. People from all around the world, different backgrounds, different stories, but they all had something in common in their messages. They'd say, I've been going through a really difficult time recently. I saw your video and I listened to the music and it reminded me that there's hope and there's beauty in life. Some would even go on to say that they're not people who usually listen to music at all. But they heard this music, and it gave them a deep sense of comfort in this difficult time. So what was happening? Well, I looked into it, and I found this was happening world over. People, perhaps some of you here, were using music as a tool to help them through this difficult time, through the pandemic. I was not alone in this. Musicians all around the world were having this same experience. People were having this same reaction to music. So I looked into it a little, and I found that studies as recently as 2017 in the US Public Library of Sciences found that music has all sorts of positive medical effects. Listening to music has been shown to alleviate anxiety, lower blood pressure, even pain. Music has been shown to heighten our mental alertness and improve our memory. But the most interesting thing for me was to find studies that associate music and listening to music with increased levels of oxytocin in the body. Now, oxytocin is the love hormone associated with positive social behavior, like trust, empathy, relaxation. So music was not only helping people to feel good in them themselves, but it was also helping to strengthen the sense of connection to other people. It was helping to us as a society to be reminded that we are connected to each other, even in these difficult times. So, what I started to realize is that this goes way back, even to our ancient ancestors. 40,000 years ago, there have been sites found from this time that have musical instruments found amongst them, meticulously carved little um, bone flutes and percussion instruments, showing that our early ancestors used music as well. And many uh, Paleolithic archaeologists say that music was a tool that was used by our ancient ancestors to like a social glue that helped to bind them together. And it was that connectedness between these social groups that helped our early ancestors to have that adaptive advantage. It helped them to thrive. So perhaps our early ancestors, when they would listen to music, it would help them to feel that sense of connection that they needed to get through those really hard times, which I'm sure for them there was many. And perhaps when they heard a familiar melody or they heard some music, 
they would be reminded that there is beauty and there's hope in life. Does that sound familiar? Well, what I'm suggesting is that perhaps what was true for our early ancestors is true for us today. Now, if I've learned anything in the past few years in my life, it's that we should say yes to music. I believe that by saying yes to music in our daily lives, we will see the benefits. It may seem like a small thing, I know, but I really think we can see something from it. So what does saying yes to music mean in our daily lives? Well, if you're somebody who loves music already, this will be easy. Take time out of your day to listen to music. If you're someone who has always felt music is not really for you, well, I challenge you. Take 10 minutes, take 15 minutes, find something that you can listen to and, and take that time out of your day to listen to and notice the effects. If we say yes to music as individuals, I believe the benefits will be there. If we say yes to music as a society by supporting music and also acknowledging its positive role, the effect, I believe, will be to strengthen that sense of connection between one another that has always helped us to thrive. I hope by saying yes to music in our daily lives, we can be reminded that there is beauty in life and there's hope even in the most difficult of times. By saying yes to music, I hope that we can strengthen that sense of connection we feel between one another. That means so much to us. Thank you.